Uh, I'm terribly sorry. Room for two more. This way, please. Boy, do I need to sit down. My feet are just... <laughs> I'm awfully sorry. I, I sometimes think we're a bit too friendly. Pushy, even. <laughs> Americans, I mean. I'm sure you're not. It's possible we're too standoffish. No, I like it. My family were English. Can I get a blister? Oh, dear. Too much sightseeing? No. No, not really. No, I'm looking for something. Back at the hotel, they called it uh, Somerset House. And the oh, place... yes, where all the records are kept. Births, marriages, deaths. Mm. Well, what I should have had them do was mark it in my A to Z. But I always kid myself I can solve everything. That's how I got to where I am in business. Anyway, my, my feet were just killing me, and I saw this place. It looked pleasant. You know, and unpretentious, so yes, I... Yes, I come here for lunch sometimes because it's quiet. They don't play loud music all the time. Yeah, I know that up music. It just means everywhere. Well, it sure is good to have a, a nice young person agree with you. I, uh, I was beginning to think I was getting old-fashioned. Well, I don't think I'm quite that young. <laughs> what? You know more than, uh, what, 25? I, I am. I'm 28. Well, I, w well, I wish that I was 28 again. That's the year I got married. I had a wonderful wife. And I still miss her a lot. Oh, she... She... She disappeared. Table for two. I can seat you now. Oh, uh, well, we're not really... Well, look, um... maybe... Maybe you're stuck with me. Is that all right? Oh, yes, of course. Can we see the menu, please? There isn't one. It's all up there. Oh. Well, let's have a look at the wine list. You know, back home, we tend to drink our own. That's California. In fact, wine's my business. You sell it? How interesting. No, I make it. No, I, I supervise it. I own some very big vineyards. Oh, how nice. <laughs> Excuse me, I could have sworn that you said that your wife was... This is a really a very, a very nice place. Hmm? That was the most terrible thing that ever happened to me in my whole life. It was three years ago. There was no note, nothing. I just came home one day and she was gone. Surely you told the police. Oh, yeah. I, I drove them crazy. But, um, you know, they got hundreds. They got thousands of people on their missing persons lists. And after a while, I just gave up. Even they said eventually I better just assume that she was dead. Oh, how awful for you. No, you're a very nice person. I, I ask myself time and time again, what did I do wrong? Huh? Maybe I just like things too so-so, I don't know. But my life's been a blank since then. No kids, so I'm uh, all on my own. Are you ready to order? The lamb casserole's best today. Uh, yes, that's fine. Thank uh, you. casserole? Yeah. Okay. And a bottle. You'll let me buy a lunch? Oh, heavens no. Why should you? Well, at least a bottle of wine. All right. Uh, Saint Emilio. Huh? What? Number 12, Saint Emilio. All right. All right, two lamb casseroles and one bottle of number 12. Coming up. So difficult, conversations in restaurants. Where were we? Well, I'm afraid I was being my usual melancholy self. Uh, living alone in the desert. Oh, I see. You've no family in California, so you decided to find your ancestors, hence Somerset House. Well, my family come from England. At least my mother and I did about 40, uh, 45 years ago. Now, if I could just locate somebody who could... Oh, dear. I almost led you astray. It's not Somerset House any longer. They've moved. Oh, no. Well, what, very far? Well, it's not in this area, but I can point you in the right direction. Well, would you know? Is it difficult to look somebody up? 
I shouldn't think so, if you've got the right names and dates and so on. Well, I don't have too much to go on. I thought I'd start with my father's grandfather, because he... Well, I mean, I don't have much choice. I never really knew my mother's maiden name. She died when I was just a little fella. I'm uh, kind of a self-made man. Orphan east of vineyards. Only took 30 years. Where did your father's family come from? Well, a village in Norfolk called Bedham. Uh, Bedham. I remember. One of the first things I remember is my mother pronouncing it. I'm very English. Not Bedham, she'd say, but Bedham. Well, there's your starting point. You do know in what year your grandfather was born. Well, I'm not sure. Uh, Dad was an only child. My grandfather had three brothers, and they were born around 1860, 1870. So if I draw a blank there, I just go five years forward and five years back. It would take an awfully long time. Of course, it would help if you had a fairly uncommon name. I mean, there can't be many entries under, say, James Crickles now. Well, the lamb, aren't you? Oh, no, we ordered number 12, the saint Emilion. What? Oh, hell. Honestly, you think they could get a simple little order, like something wrong? Oh, no. It just happens that my name is Smith. Smith? Really, Eva, why didn't you offer to help him? Me? Well, it didn't even occur to me that a man with a fortune... Well, he's obviously rich, dear. Vineyards in California. And no offspring. He might have taken a fancy to have forgotten about finding boring old relatives. I hardly think so. He seemed to have this need. How long does he have in England? I don't really know. A couple of weeks, I think. Then he's out of his mind. He could spend ages just working through the index before he so much as claps eyes on any birth, marriage or death certificates. I bet he gives up on the first day. Not him. It's too important to him. Why? Does he expect to find he's well-connected, in line for a title, Lord Smith of San Francisco? Oh, Janet, you do boil everything down to... He's lonely. I mean, he's the most ordinary-looking man. Middle-aged... Slightly tanned, quite well dressed. He was like an overweight teddy bear. And he seemed to have this need to, I don't know, find somebody he belonged to. Or who belonged to him, naturally. Who wants the fortune to stay in the family? Yes, well, perhaps it's as simple as that. Darling, do switch that thing off. We can do them any old time. I want to boss it. All right, um, I'll make some coffee. Can you imagine how many Smiths are born in England in a year? Your Mr. Smith has to check every male Smith born in... What was the name of the village? In Norfolk, was it? It does sound impossible. Poor Mr. Smith. Don't tell me, darling, I know. I've been through it. One of the first assignments I had on the magazine was to locate the descendants of Thomas Hughes. He wrote Tom Brown's school days. Really, Eva, didn't your family ever teach you to read? <sighs> Darling, what have you done with my conditioner? I feel quite bad about it. I more or less encouraged him. Actually, there is another way. What's that? Parish record. If you knew the village in Norfolk. It ended in ham. Pronounced mmm. Mmm. Well, there's Bressingham. My aunt's a great gardener. We went to Bressingham Hall once. Lovely display. Wonderful lot of alpine plants. They were alpine in Norfolk. I'll never understand. Just flat as a pancake. Towel. Read em. Red bed. That was it. Not bed ham. Bed em. There you are, then. The local church would be sure to have it. Well, you can check each denomination. A village can't have that many churches. Probably Anglican, anyway. The father's name would be in the register. Which father? The father of the three brothers. Oh, do try to keep up, dear. Your Mr. Smith has to check each brother's entry to establish their Christian names, then look under those names to find the marriage entries. 
The marriages would be years later. Some of them may have moved away. Mm. I know, darling. I've been through it all, dear, with old Watson, Thomas Hughes. Believe me, your Mr. Smith needs all the help he can get. Well, don't look at me. Why not? Oh, Janet, it was a chance conversation in a wine bar. Oh, but... Eva, you're so negative. I'm not. I just don't think it's any of my business. Really, dear, aren't you always telling me what a wonderful life I have on the magazine? How I get about the country and abroad, too? And how boring your life is in your electronics firm? Mr. Smith didn't once mention where he was staying in London. I mean, even if I wanted to, I wouldn't have the faintest idea where to find him. Don't be stupid, dear. You've just told me exactly where he'll be, at least for the next few days. In the Kingsway, in the register office, working through the Smiths. Well, if you won't go, I will. Janet, you wouldn't. Why not help the poor old thing? And your motives would be of the purest, wouldn't they? Don't be silly, darling. Of course I won't do anything. Can't you take a joke? Are you all right? I'm sorry. I just can't find the volume I want. Someone's obviously put it back on the wrong shelf. Yeah, I know. People just don't think. Might have known it wouldn't work. Well, I've just moved into a new office nearby, and I decided to nip out and do something I've been meaning to do for ages. Look up my ancestors. <laughs> Silly of me. I have to get back and... Uh... Well, what date are you looking for? Oh, uh, 1868. Uh, the second quarter. <laughs> That's the one I've got right here. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. No, look, you go ahead. Uh, I've got all day. Your time is more valuable than mine. Are you sure? Yeah, please. 
That's very kind of you. It'll probably take ages anyway. Why did my mother have to have such a common name as Smith? Your name is Smith? Well, I guess it's not that much of a coincidence. Well, my mother's name, actually. I'm Janet Murdoch. Oh, John Smith. Oh. I'm having a terrible time. Oh, why is that? Well, the trouble is they don't have any villages here, just the nearest big town. Uh, if I don't know the town, I've got to try to spot my grandfather's village, well, close by. Oh, that must take ages. Yeah, but I'm getting faster. Anyway, I'm taking up your precious time. No, not at all. Oh. I wonder if this is my Smith. Matthew. Great Yarmouth. I imagine that's where they'd register people born in Bedham. Did you say Bedham? Yes. In Norfolk? <laughs> Why, yes. Miss Murdoch. I've got something really wonderful to tell you. Matthew Smith, Mark Smith, Luke Smith. How about that? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You know, we got to Mark before we realized it's it. It's not infrequent, sir. But you only appear to have three here. John seems to be missing. Well, John's my grandfather. I know all about him. No, it's his brother's descendants I'm trying to trace. And I think I found one already. But we'll have to wait for the birth certificates to be sure. Uh, how long will that take? Three or four days, quite soon. Soon? Uh, Janet, I've got a great idea. I'll be back to pay in a minute. Now, what? Uh, don't get me wrong, but this weekend, why don't you and I travel to Norfolk together, to Bedham, to find the church with all the old parish records. Now, I am sure this is the best way to find out about our people. Will you? Will you come? I'd be delighted to, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Mr. Smith! i better sort out exactly what relation to me you are. Well, can I say something? I've dreamed for a long time about finding someone or some family. And it might have been a boring old uncle or a, a wicked great aunt. Instead, it was you. I'd better get back. Look, here's where I'm staying. Now, phone me the first thing in the morning and tell me what arrangements to make for the weekend. Hello? Uh, Tommy Williams here. Oh, hello, Tommy. Um, can you just turn on for a second? Uh, yeah, sure. Hello. Is uh, Janet there? Oh, no, isn't she away on a job? Called onto the magazine. I haven't seen her all week. Oh, oh, well, you know Janet. She never tells me where she's going or when she's coming back. Uh, do us a favor. Uh, take a look around. Uh, she may have left something, a note or something like that. Oh, all right. I I'll have a look around. Yes, do that. Uh, ring me back, OK? Yes, OK, Tommy. I'll get right back to you.
drive after you left for Norfolk. It's simply to confirm that I shall be pleased to show you the entries in our register pertaining to your mother's family, the Smiths, although it's very likely that we have nothing that you have not already seen at the General Register Office. Yours sincerely, Dennis Harcourt, vicar. The bitch! Why, yes, Miss Murdoch called on a Saturday afternoon. Two weeks ago it would have been, or was it more? No, that's right, I was conducting a baptism. Or was it the... Yes, a baptism. And they waited until it was over. She had someone with her? Her uh, cousin. Her cousin? Well, I gather it wasn't her first cousin, but uh, they were related in some way. He was from America. His name was John Smith. John Smith the Third, as the Americans like to say. A middle-aged man, slightly overweight, with graying temples. Indeed. He was most appreciative of everything that I showed him. Well, his father and his grandfather were born here, so I was able to look up their baptisms and their marriages in the register. It goes back to the 16th century. Oh, we're very proud of our register. And did it turn out that Miss Murdoch was related to the Smiths of Bedham? On her mother's side, her great grandfather, Matthew Smith, is buried in the churchyard. Would you like to see his grave? He was the brother of the American gentleman's grandfather, if I've got it right. That's the only Smith grave of that period in the churchyard. When I first got Miss uh, Murdoch's letter, I was hoping I would be able to locate the graves of the grandfather and father of our American visitor. I thought it would be such a thrill for him. But it was not to be. No, they're buried elsewhere. Do you know where? Uh, yes, I, uh, I got it from Mr. Harper, the sexton. Well, he's been here much longer than I have. Is it confidential? Uh, no, not really. It was information that in the circumstances I uh, decided not to volunteer to Miss Murdoch and Mr. Smith. Well, they both seemed so happy to have found each other, and one didn't wish it. Yeah, you're not one of the family, are you? Oh, no, absolutely not. Oh, well then. The first John Smith, our American friend, grandfather, was apparently given to the most appalling fits of violence, and he became quite dangerous. He was committed to a, a private asylum in London, and he ended his days there. And his only son, the second John Smith, he also ended his days in distressing circumstances. He was convicted of murdering two local girls by strangulation. Fander was believed to have been a third, but the charge was never brought. He was found guilty but insane and sent to Broadmoor. And to compound the tragedy, he had a wife and a baby son, and they went to America. Well, how can you tell somebody that their grandfather and their father are psychopaths? Perhaps you can understand why I was silent on the matter when Mr. Smith and Miss Murdoch was here. I do think that the medical men and the psychiatrists make too much of heredity. And anyway, the dear girl will be safe in London by now, won't she? But that's the point. She never came home. But it's over two weeks, in. Oh, oh, my word.